Gardeners are always chasing bigger harvests, but most end up spending more on fertilizers than they'd like. The truth is, some of the most powerful plant boosters don't come from a store at all. Old growers knew how to turn simple scraps into liquid gold that fueled flowering and fruiting at levels money can't easily buy. This method costs nothing, can be done in any garden, and when applied at the right time, it pushes plants into their most productive phase. Let's break down how this works, how to make it safely, and exactly when to use it for maximum yield. The key is transforming scraps into a fermenting liquid. The base of this DIY fertilizer is not about throwing random waste into soil. It's about using controlled fermentation to unlock nutrients from organic matter. When fruit peels, vegetable skins, or even spoiled produce are chopped and submerged in water, microbes get to work breaking them down into soluble compounds. Instead of sitting in a pile for months, as in traditional compost, fermentation works faster in liquid because nutrients dissolve and microbes multiply in suspension. The types of scraps matter. Banana peels contribute potassium, which supports fruit formation and stem strength. Overripe papaya skins or melon rinds add enzymes and sugars that speed microbial action. Even a handful of pumpkin or squash scraps brings in additional trace minerals. A simple formula is to fill a container one-third with chopped scraps and then top it up with clean water, leaving space at the top for gases to escape. Cover with a cloth or a loose lid so the mixture can breathe but stay protected from pests. Within a week, you will notice bubbles forming. That is carbon dioxide being released as microbes break down sugars and fibres. By the second week, the water turns darker and develops a sour sweet smell. This signals that nutrients have been released and the liquid is ready to be strained and stored. Nutrients released during the process are ideal for fruiting. Most chemical fertilizers lean heavily on nitrogen for leafy growth. Fermented liquid fertilizer provides a broader balance that favors flowering and fruiting instead of just pushing green growth. Potassium from banana peels strengthens stems and helps blossoms hold. Phosphorus, released from vegetable scraps, aids root health and seed formation. The sugars and enzymes feed soil microbes, which in turn make locked-up nutrients available to plant roots. This combination is why gardeners using fermented liquid see such dramatic fruit set. Tomato clusters fill out evenly instead of dropping flowers. Pepper plants carry more pods without stalling. Cucumbers and melons keep producing longer into the season. The difference is not simply more fertilizer. It is the right form of nutrients delivered at the right time. Dilution is the step that protects your plants. One of the biggest mistakes is applying raw fermented liquid directly to plants. Just like concentrated chemical fertilizer, it can burn roots or disrupt soil balance if used straight. A reliable dilution ratio is one part fermented liquid to ten parts water for heavy feeders like tomatoes, cucumbers and peppers. For lighter feeders or for foliar spraying, dilute further, one part liquid to twenty parts water. So, as a practical example, if you strain two litres of fermented liquid, you can actually make up to 20 litres of usable fertiliser for fruiting crops. You'll want to apply this once a week during flowering and peak production. For young plants, or, you know, leafy greens, it's best to cut the strength in half 
and apply less often, just to avoid overstimulation. Microbes really make this liquid more powerful than store fertilizers. What sets this liquid apart from bottled fertilizer isn't just the nutrients, but the living microbes it carries. During fermentation, colonies of bacteria and fungi multiply. When this liquid is poured into soil, those microbes don't die. They continue breaking down organic matter, unlocking minerals and stabilizing the soil food web. Over time, this leads to healthier, more resilient plants. Some gardeners enhance this microbial richness by adding a spoon of molasses at the start of fermentation to feed bacteria, but honestly, it's not required. The natural sugars in the fruit scraps already provide plenty of energy for microbes to thrive. Even without additions, the microbial activity in the liquid is far higher than in any sterile chemical fertilizer. Timing of use makes the difference in results. The secret to making this fertilizer truly effective lies in applying it at the correct growth stage. In the early weeks, when plants are still building leaves and roots, this liquid should be used lightly, no more than once every two weeks at half strength. Once plants reach the flowering stage, shift to full strength applications once per week. This ensures blossoms do not abort, but instead transition into strong, healthy fruit. For crops like tomatoes, you know, it's best to start at the first blossom clusters and keep going weekly until the fruit set really begins to slow down. When it comes to cucumbers and squash, begin feeding at flowering and just maintain that regular schedule to stretch out the harvest period. If you stop too early, your yields end up short, but applying the feed too late can actually reduce storage quality. So, by following the crop stages closely, you make sure, honestly, that every single dose really counts. The most powerful aspect of this method, I reckon, is sustainability. Every peel, every rind, or even a bit of spoiled fruit that might have just gone to waste is instead converted into concentrated fertilizer. Nothing actually leaves the cycle. Nutrients are captured, microbes are multiplied, and the soil grows richer with each application. Over time, gardeners find themselves less dependent on, you know, store-bought inputs while producing more abundant harvests. If you want your garden to move beyond expensive bags and bottles, just start a jar of fermented liquid today. Use the scraps you already have, follow the fermentation process, dilute it correctly, and time your applications with flowering. The result is, well, stronger plants, heavier yields, and a healthier soil ecosystem, all achieved without spending a single dime. If this guide gave you new insight into feeding your soil and boosting your harvest naturally, subscribe to Soil Doctor for more field-tested methods. And, you know, share this with a fellow grower who should know that the best plant food often starts with scraps in their own kitchen.